Well, now that you're here, I think we can all proceed. Good to see you could all make it. The revolution has begun. Now, gentlemen, we all know why we are here. It's because of the state of the nation. Insecurity is at this critical level, and it is evident that we no longer have the luxury of time. The revolution must happen sooner than we thought. I agree with you, Chukuma. The state of the country has gone from bad to chaotic in a matter of months. There is confusion everywhere. So, what are you proposing we do, sir? And do we have a definite D-Day? Uh, not yet. But that is why we are here. But one thing is for certain that by the end of this meeting, every single man in this room would have had a specific role on how to proceed with the operation. We have been talking, we have been planning, and we have been preparing. Now is the time to act. Now is the time to liberate our country from these political jobbers. Now is the time to free this country from the grip of this so-called politician. Now is the time to free this country from corruption and economic robbery. From a system where 99% of the people are poor and 1% control all the wealth. Where regional governments now use the army to fight its own people. I agree, we must act fast. Given the new exigencies, our only option is the use of maximum force to exact sanity where and when it's necessary. Any obstacle capable of derailing the, the revolution must be crushed by any means necessary. The country is already in a state of anarchy, Chris. You saw for yourself what the Sadauna ordered the army to do to those thief people. Is that the kind of person you want to be diplomatic with? Be reasonable. But at this point, what are our options? watch the country go up in flames because of the, the greed of a few men. I say we do what needs to be done. Gentlemen, I believe we're on the same track here. But I must agree with Major Chris here. We must be seen to be more superior than these bloody politicians who go around killing their own people. We Nobody brings a knife to a gunfight. Nobody. We we'll stick to the original plan. All political leaders and the military collaborators are to be arrested. And when arrest is resisted, it must be met with maximum force. I'm sure that is clear enough. Yes. Go. Wally, can you please give us a brief on our targets? This is the list of our targets for immediate arrest at the HR. The mission is to arrest all of them, along with their right-hand men. Abubakar Tafawa Balewa, Samuel Ladoki Akintola, Dennis Chukude Osadebe, Michael Ihonukara Obara. And in the army, our target are Major General J.T. Rossi, the two brigade commanders, Brigadier Samuel Ademu Legun, and Brigadier Mai Malari Zakaria, Colonel Koa Muhammad, Lieutenant Colonel James Pam, Colonel Raf Shudeinde, and of course, the most political officer in the army, Lieutenant Colonel Abogo Lagama, Commander Fort Battalion Ibado. At H hour, we will strike simultaneously from all regional headquarters. I will head operations in the northern region. Ima? You will run operations in Lagos with Chuka and Okafo. Wali, you will cover the rest of the western region and since we don't have troops stationed in Benin, we will send a small unit from Enu. By the time the revolution is successful, every officer who didn't join will regret. That's right. After dissolving the regions, we will create 14 new states that will be governed strictly by the military governors who supported the revolution. History will write about us. 
and our timely intervention that saved my children. What if we feel? What did you say? What if the operation fails? I mean, we've gone over these plans for months now. But one thing we have never planned is an exit strategy. You know me. I'm a realist, not a pessimist. Yes, we have our rules. And we all know the objectives of the revolution. But gentlemen, you also know that an operation plan is not complete without a contingency. Has any one of you thought of what will happen? What would happen to us? To our families? In fact, to the entire country? So I ask again. But in 1519, Captain Cortez Hernandez took on the shores of the Yucatan Peninsula with 10 boats and 600 men. This seemed like a, a suicide mission, given that the captain was relatively inexperienced. Upon arrival, he wanted to make sure that his men were 100% committed to nothing but victory. So he gave the order to burn down the ship. The only means of getting it. That would leave them with two options, death or victory. Two years after his arrival, Captain Cortez became the first man in six centuries to conquer Mexico. We are not soldiers of occupation, Major Okafo. We are revolutionaries. And our course is bigger than any individual. We're going to take back power from this bunch of corrupt politicians. We are going to break the systematic form of capitalism. We are going to change the course of this country forever. In the end, posterity will be the best. But the only way we can succeed is if we are willing to lose everything, including our very own life. There is no contingency, gentlemen. We burnt our ship a long time ago. This may be the last time we get to sit and plan like this before the D-Day. If anybody has anything to say. Now. You can count on me, sir. We are all in. The Revolution Brothers. Kuna 
now begins to look more and more like a straightforward military revolt against corruption in government, and one that's likely to last. It has popular backing. What's not so clear is who its real backers are. The man at present being put forward is the army commander, General Agui Ironzi, who arrived at the heavily guarded parliament buildings to hold the new administration's first press conference. Major M.G. Ogbu, can you please give me an account of the night of the coup in Kaduna? Well, it's uh, rather something like the longest day. We started this off on the night of the 13th of January, uh, when a night exercise was planned by the military college, which I command. Uh, we took our troops to the ground and taught them how to unite attack. We didn't tell them what we were planning for, but uh, at the end of the exercise, we took them out and showed them various places where they were to stand. Permanent secretaries in charge of federal ministries will continue in their office, carrying out the normal functions of government, and they shall be directly responsible to the federal military government when constituted. Now, what are your relations with General Laurent and Labour? Well, he's very good, he's my boss, and uh, I've always been under him, and uh, I still am, and uh, still I'm under him. If there is still any problem with you, uh, misunderstandings arose, but uh, this, this was due to the publication of the press and by announcements over the radio. My main 